Good morning, everybody. This is Sharzat Morgan. I want to read a comment that I really liked here from Sunny Time Dolls on my video, Women Worth Having Don't Use Men, uh, which I'll link up here. She writes, now she's quoting me at the 749 mark, I don't want to receive something from someone I don't like, which is what I said in the video. She continues, this statement is a valid sentiment shared by many women. However, since the vast majority of men are totally fine with accepting sexual access from women they do not like, it has corrupted the dating process. Women often find that 95% of the guys taking them out on a date want freebie sex service and after a while the time wasted forces women to adapt and either date for monetary benefit or drop out of the dating market altogether i really like that comment because she's pointing out that although many women thank you for pointing out i'm not the only woman who only wants to receive from a man that i like that men have no trouble receiving sex from women they don't like at all so that was a great insight that i you know that that she shared with me that i didn't realize i only want to receive from a man that i like him taking me to dinner him doing things for me but a man has no trouble getting our bodies he doesn't have to like us at all now, I'm not trying to put men down. You guys are designed this way. I think these discussions are important so that we can be more effective in relating with each other. I think that men after 30 are a lot more uh, authentic in this regard. And they'll actually tell the woman, I'm just looking for something casual. And I will say there are so many women who also are down for something casual. And maybe it's not just that they're just so horny all the time because <laughs> these younger women are so DTF and women of all ages. Because I talk to men. Most of my bookkeeping clients are men. In fact, they're all men. And I talk to them. They're mostly younger men in their 20s and 30s, even 40s, 50s, 60s, all ages. But most of them are younger, so they're actively out in that dating market with women in their 20s and 30s and these guys are getting a lot of sex they're meeting women either at the gym online women will approach men <laughs> like start conversations or ask for their number like women have become pretty aggressive and perhaps that's because they've adapted uh to well if i can't get a man to date me and I, I'm a woman, I like the energy of a man, I like the touch of a man, I like the scent of a man, I like to be held by a man. If I can't get a relationship with a man, at least I can get sex with a man. If I can't, I want the smell of a man, I want the touch of a man, I crave the strength of a man, and I want him in a relationship, but if I can't have him in a relationship, at least I can have the sex with him because that's a part of him that's easy to get. Now, that could be the reason that hookup culture has really taken off because I have no other explanation for it. Most women only want to receive from a guy they like. The women hooking up with these guys, and there's a lot of hookups going, <laughs> a lot of hookups going on. Um, they like men, they want men, and probably they would like to date these men. But if dating is off the table, they will adapt and just be um, a vaginal receptacle for his ejaculation, pretty much. Because we know from Post Not Clarity video that I made uh, a week or so ago, I can't link that here because I can only link one video for each video and i already linked the one i'm commenting on but if you search on my channel post nut clarity explained uh, i have some quotes in there from men who explain post nut clarity and they really explain how 
their testosterone just drives them to have a woman or to just jerk off to this most craziest porn. And after they ejaculate, they're like, oh my God, what have I done? That porn scene is disgusting. This woman is repulsive. And that's just their nature when they're really young. I would say after 30, men have a lot more awareness about who they're having sex with. But I have met men in their 40s and 50s who have no game, who just use women for sex, who lie to them and lead them on, or who are just kind of gross and just are online. I've heard the stories, women telling me, I met this guy online, he just was disgusting. We sat down for lunch and he just kept commenting on my breasts, like no game at all. So the other comment also I want to make on this is that the women that we often see on videos saying, I'm not going out with a guy unless he takes me to a nice dinner, that could be her way of getting a monetary benefit for her giving an attention to a guy she doesn't even know. It's her way, it's her way, and I don't think she's aware of it, because I'm just becoming aware of it now from having read this comment, that we as women have a way of saying, I want to know that you have, that you're a man of, who's competent and effective and has something to offer, and I want some kind of investment before I will go out with you. Especially if, like, I think these women who are saying that you got to have to take me to dinner, I think they're talking about men that they just met online. They don't really know the guy. And so they're probably thinking, well, what are you, are you going to offer me something? But they're saying it in a very angry way, very entitled way, because I don't think that they've allowed themselves to realize that they want to only receive from a man that, they like that they're worth that's worth receiving from and so they're using the take me to dinner as a substitute for I want to know that you really like me I want to know that you're willing to invest in me and I've done something similar because I've tried all different kinds of strategies you know after my divorce I was just wanting sex from men and then after that I changed into, well, I want to know that a guy likes me before I will go out with him. I want to put some kind of a test in his way, some kind of a barrier he has to cross to show him he's actually interested in me before I will go out with him and fuck him <laughs> pretty much. And my test was take me to dinner. So I did that with about six or seven guys. And what I found was the guys that took me to dinner were all simps and people pleasers. I wasn't interested in them at all. So that's when I realized I don't want to go to dinner unless I already like you because taking me to dinner didn't make me like you if you were a simp. But there was one guy that took me to dinner that I did really like, but he turned out to be just a jerk anyway. <laughs> so I never fucked him, but... I did have a crush on him and I wanted him to take me to dinner as proof that he was interested in me enough to take me to dinner. But that didn't make him, that didn't prove that he was a, a man of his word, of integrity, that he liked me, that he was competent or effective. I had just kind of like maybe pressured him into taking me to dinner and he relented because he was trying to get something from me or whatever. I don't know. Because we never hooked up. And the other men who took me to dinner were trying to get my attention. They thought they had to do that to get my attention. So that wasn't really a good test. But I get the underlying idea is how do we as women vet men to know that we want to spend time with them? One more thing I want to say about... The women who are like, I'm getting all dressed up. I'm doing all the stuff to take to go to dinner to, to meet you for a date. So I want you to spend some money on me. And, you know, I think that's a woman saying, I really want a date. 
I love getting dressed up for a man. I like making myself beautiful for a man. I want to enjoy the romance of a dinner, but it's moving things too quickly. I think if people meet online, they should have low investment dates. Maybe just start with a video call or a coffee. And I wouldn't put a lot of effort into the makeup or the looks. Just whatever you wear to the office would be fine. But I think it goes to something else, which is that typically people met in real life. I grew up in the 60s, okay, long before dating apps. Every relationship I've ever been in was before dating apps, where I met people in real life. Where did I meet my boyfriends? At work and at school. At work and at school. And the nice thing about that is meeting people in a natural environment is actually a lot more powerful because there's something that happens when you see someone in real life that you cannot replicate online and not just by some woman coming up to a guy that she sees at the gym and getting his number. There's something that happens internally when we see someone repeatedly over time in the same environment. Okay, so let's take the example of work. My first boyfriend, uh, and I'll just use this as an example, okay? I was 16 or 17, he was 21. It was at a restaurant where I worked. Like a, they don't have those restaurants anymore. Kind of like where there's the person behind the salad bar. That was me making the salads and then he was the cook who made the steaks he was one of the cooks and he was older he was good looking he had his own place and so every time i went to work he was there he had some authority he was older he was more established he was better with the customers he had a relationship with the bosses he also had adult friends um, he had a car at that time. I didn't have a car yet and he liked me. He was very nice. And I, every time I went to work, I saw him. Sometimes I had a shift where he wasn't there. That allowed me to wonder where he was and when would I see him again? And then I would see him again and seeing him over time, I saw that he showed up for work. He was good with the customers. He was effective. I could see him repeatedly over time, wonder about him in the intermittent time, see how he interacted with people. And there's something that happens in that kind of a natural evolution of getting to know someone. And I do think that is how most people meet. Sure, in the movies, they have this thing often of like, oh, I saw someone and we fell in love. That's pretty rare. I believe there's something that happens when you wonder about someone that, you know, when I'm when next time I go to the gym, is he going to be there? Is he going to be there? You know, wonder if he's going to be there, that kind of wondering and then seeing someone is a natural way of building attraction. And we've lost that a lot because number one, people are told they cannot date at work. I think that's a huge mistake. Uh, is a huge mistake. There's someone I saw, there's someone I saw on YouTube. I don't remember now who it is. I think it's one of these guys I don't actually like, but he said he promotes his employees dating at work and that already several marriages had resulted from his employees dating each other. I think dating at work is a really good idea. The fact that it has been so made so taboo is a huge mistake because where the where the heck are people supposed to meet school is a good place college but fewer men are going to college now it's mostly women at colleges now 60 percent women 40 percent men or even more percentage of women so that's not that great for meeting men a lot of women will never find a man in college or in graduate school work 
they've said it's not a good idea. And then more and more people are now working from home. So if you're a guy working from home or you're a woman working from home, where are you supposed to meet someone? Uh, you're not supposed to talk to people at the gym. They have their headphones on, you know, they're not, you're not supposed to talk to them. So we've kind of shamed people from connecting. We've shamed people from connecting. And is it like something the government is trying to get us to do? Blurring the lines between men and women? Because the government does all these propaganda operations anyway. They could easily run a public service announcement or something. I think that they like the fact that our society is degenerating into this divisiveness and lack of cohesion between men and women because if they can divide us we're weaker we're easier to control we're weaker and there's a lot of benefit in people being in healthy relationships because they can support each other not just financially but also emotionally and they can meet each other's needs for sex and companionship in a way that's more healthy than just going through hookups. I really think that women are doing hookups because it's the only way we can get guys. And that's how I get my men. Uh, they come for bookkeeping appointments and that's how I get to talk to men. That's how I get to be in the company of men in the space of men in a way that feels very safe and very, you know, even just, I think that we can smell the pheromones of people within a few feet. I, I totally get this comment that women have decided that they're going to date for monetary benefit. That would be a sugar baby or an escort or even a woman that has taken on a lover who takes her on vacations and then she'll have sex with him there. Or drop out of the dating market altogether. And I would say, and I would add a third one, which is just, we're just going to fuck these guys and have our hearts broken. We're just going to have sex with these guys and have our hearts broken. Or we're going to tell ourselves that we don't really want anything more, that we're okay with this. We're going to shut down our hearts and our feelings and tell ourselves that we have to be okay with this. And most women are not. Very few women are going to be okay with hookup scraps. Very few women are going to be okay with that. You can just look at lesbians versus gay men. You can just look at that to see the difference between men and women. Okay. I've never heard of lesbians going to bathhouses or giving each other oral sex through bathroom stalls. I've never heard of that. Or lesbians having uh, uh, orgies with poppers you know, with all kinds of strangers. I've never heard of that. It, 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 it might exist. It would be very rare. It's very common among gay men. We know that men have this very voracious sexual appetite that they crave variety and adventure. And they're really not that choosy when it comes to sex, unless they have to pay. <laughs> um, men are very choosy when it comes to relationships, though. Anyway, yeah, so... So the dating market has been really blurred by women being too easy because that's the only way they can get men and men going, well, why should I get into a relationship? I'm getting all the sex I want. And believe me, they're getting sex. I talk to men all the time and they can get sex. It's not that hard to get sex. If you know how to talk to a woman, you can get sex. You can be fat. Now the guys I'm talking to are pretty fit. Um, usually the, the my and my bookkeeping clients, I focus mostly on guys that are like more in the um, like professional or uh, very health conscious more is I would say, and they can get women. But I also have heard like different YouTubers talk about their friends who can get women. There was one I listened to, and I I can't remember his name or his channel. I'm sorry. But he talked about a friend that he had, a short, fat guy, very fat, who can get women all the time because he's so good at talking to women. So if you're good at talking to women, you can get women. You need to have confidence. You need to be able to talk to women. I mean, it helps if you have a job, you dress decently. And there are enough men out there like that. 
So all those guys who are saying women only want men with money, they're deluded, they're living in a fantasy world, they're just afraid to talk to women. If you can talk to women and treat them as people, uh, then you can easily get women. And there are a lot of women that are out there and they're hooking up with no condoms. They don't want to wear a condom. This is what they tell the guy. I've had guys tell me this. It feels better without a condom. And some of these guys will go along with that. And some of them will insist on wearing a condom or they'll wear a condom with some women, but not with others that they know and trust to have birth control or not have any STDs. Because a woman who's just going around fucking without a condom, you kind of have to wonder what kind of bacteria and diseases are lurking deep inside her body. You know, she's not very choosy. So, and then a lot of women have been taught in our over-sexualized society, which the government is promoting through their liberal agenda and the trans agenda and all this. A lot of women have think that by showing more of their body, they can get men. Okay, you're going to get, so a man sees a tit, a piece of ass sticking out, tight thing, something sexy, and he's going to get hard. It's just biology. That doesn't mean he likes you. It doesn't mean he's going to value you. This is what women have to understand. The women know that men will gawk at our bodies. So that feels like a type of power. It's like a type of attention. So if I show a man more of my body, is the thinking, or I'm more sexual than the other women, he will like me, I will have his attention. But you don't have his attention. You have his dick trying to ejaculate in you. To get his attention, you have to appeal to something deeper inside the man, which is his heart, his um, interest. And you're not going to stir that by showing your ass or your tits or just hooking up with him right away. That if a man likes you and you hook up with him right away, it won't make a difference. But hooking up with him is not going to make him like you any more than some simpy guy taking you to dinner you're not going to like some simpy guy just because he took you to dinner okay if there's a guy that you're repulsed by and he wants to take you shopping to buy you this gorgeous pair of shoes you might go it's not going to make him like you it's not going to make you like this guy or a guy sends you flowers or writes you poetry it's not going to make you like him just because he did that it's the same for guys. They're not going to like you just because you spread your legs. It's not going to make him like you if he didn't like you already. So stop doing that. So what's the solution? I don't really know. <laughs> I just think that, I mean, I dropped out of the dating market altogether. I'm just out of it. Uh, the online experience has been disappointing because these apps have not figured out how to deliver a high quality experience to a woman. They're just seed markets for hookup culture. And a lot of women are not on those apps, okay? The only women on those apps are desperate women or women looking for a hookup, you know, or women who haven't yet figured out that the quality of men on there is very poor because a man who's out socializing is going to meet women and most women don't want a man who's sitting at home on his apps. Okay, so if there's a guy on an app, why are you on the app? You're just looking for a hookup or you're not able to attract women in real life because you don't leave your house. You don't talk to women. So you have issues, in my opinion. You're either looking for a hookup or you're antisocial. So you're a red flag already. If you're on the dating apps to get women other than to try to get laid, frankly, in my opinion, I know when I was going through my hookup phase, I went out with a couple guys in their fifties and I didn't want to date them because they're boring. One guy was a programmer and he worked from home. I'm like, you're boring. I don't want to date some guy who's, who's home all day. To me, that's feminized energy. Sorry. I like a guy who goes out into the world and does stuff with the world. You're just home sitting on your computer unless you're leading a, leading a team and you're also traveling sometimes. If all you do all day is sit at home, work on your computer, working for someone who tells you what to do, you're too boring for me. I don't want you. So I think this work from home trend has feminized men. 
it's not a masculine space. I'm sorry. I just, it doesn't excite me. I like a man who's <laughs> out doing stuff that excites me. If you don't excite me, I am not interested. So I think that this work from home movement has not been that great for men. It has not been that great for meeting people. And those men are going to be on dating apps because they don't know where to meet women and they're not going out. And I go out to a lot of places and I don't, I rarely see a single man alone. Okay. Um, I rarely see a single guy out alone, whether it's dinner or play or a book club, they go to the gym alone, but even a lot of guys don't go to the gym alone. They go with the girlfriend. But they will go to the gym alone. They will go to the grocery store alone. But those are not good places to meet men, the grocery store, the coffee shop. The best places, like I said, school, work, school and work. And those are places where we tell people shouldn't really mingle or date. So I, I think there are a lot of social changes that have disrupted the dating market. And then people go online. That is not where successful men are going they don't have to because successful men are out in the world and they're meeting women in the real world. So all that's left on the dating apps are men who lack social skills, who don't leave the house or who are looking for a hookup. And the dating apps don't help because they don't vet men properly. Anyone can make an account because they just want the, want the money. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. And men are getting a lot of sex. <laughs> they don't have to date. They will, people are still getting married. Don't get me wrong. I know people that are getting married still and having kids. That still happens. But I think that the hookup culture has also taken away. I mean, even for me, if I went on a date with a guy, I wouldn't even know what to talk about because all I talk about is sex. Like I am out of practice. I would have to start reading some history books or, you know, I mean, I talk about the wars. I talk about sex. I talk about relationships or parenting, but those are not really good topics to have with someone you just meet. Um, I think that going out and dating is something that I, I would have to practice, <laughs> like understanding different people, what are their interests, getting interested in other people, really listening to them, doing activities that I'm not used to doing because they are something they're interested in. So I'm going to try it. Like, I think these are all really good practices that have been kind of lost. And, you know, even in neighborhoods now, people just push the garage door open or pull in, close the garage door. I really think that uh, these social movements about Me Too and working from home, telling men they can be women and totally disrespecting women and men uh, have, have done some damage. And the best thing is to just ignore that social noise and be like no the trans people are mentally ill men cannot be women men are valuable and women are valuable and to just be who you want to be as a woman to be a man as you want to be a man and talk to people when you want to talk to people you know uh, in real life and I think we also have to find new ways of getting into social com into communities out of the house, um, joining clubs, volunteering or activities, because once people get out of college, usually people got married in their twenties. Okay. That's the easiest time to get married. After that, people usually met at work. If you're not going, if you're done with college and you're not going anywhere to work, how are you supposed to meet people when online is just a toxic slime fest? There are no good quality people are really fed up with that and they're not on there anymore. A lot of, the reason that so many men are on there is so they're so desperate to get fucked. The reason that so few women are on there is because they're slime fests. So 
but I will tell you, I go on meetup.com and I go to meetup events. There are not any men there. And the men that go are just losers. They're like, I would never date them. They're way beneath me. When I say way beneath me, it's that means I would rather be alone than have you touch me, dance with me, or buy me a drink. I would rather be alone because you lack confidence. You lack social skills. You don't know how to dress. And being with you would be an embarrassment or a liability. That doesn't mean the man is a loser. He just needs to <laughs> find someone with fewer standards. I don't know. I hate to sound like a snob, but it's not that difficult for a man to get women. Okay, I am going to put a video in the description from this man whose channel I've watched. His name is John Griffin, I think. I don't know now. Uh, okay, I have to find it just a moment. Okay, it's this guy, okay? Now, he's divorced at, in his 60s, and um, he asks, says, how can an old, ugly guy get dates? Because he's old and he's ugly, and he met so many women, very beautiful and successful women, on these dating apps. And he talks about a step-by-step -step tutorial, and it's, when I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, that's definitely going to work to get a woman, but it's fucking hard work. Um, he lives in the Washington, D.C. area, so that would be helpful. He's not living out in the boonies. And uh, he goes into the things that men have to do to get a woman. Number one, they have to take like several hundred photos to get a few good ones. He talks about what kind of photos to take, how to write your bio, and that you have to look, the men have to look at as a sales job is to get, now he's looking for relationships, but he also got a lot of sex, just sex. Um, and you have to try to get the appointment. He calls a date getting the appointment that you typically have to go on three or four dates before you will have sex with the woman, uh, how to talk to the woman, how to get her interested in um, going on a date with you. I mean, it's so much work. That I was thinking if I were a man, I'd be like, I don't want to sign up for this because it's a lot of work. But listening to it from a woman's point of view, I'm like, yeah, these things would work. It's not that easy to get women if you authentically want to get them. And he has some things for how you can authentically do it. Uh, showing interest in a person, letting the woman talk. Um, and... Uh, uh, he, he his channel is pretty good. He he's an older guy, over sixty, and there are not that many of us older people on YouTube. So you might want to check him out. And I he's not leading women on. He's like these are the things that you as a man have to do to get women. And I think a lot of men are too lazy. They don't want to do all that stuff. And if they're not willing to do all that stuff, I don't really want to deal with them. Would I go out with this guy? I don't think he's good looking. Uh, I find him a little bit repulsive, frankly, physically, uh, but he has all the right things in place. You know, he's um, uh, a guy that's got his own stuff going on, and that's what women want. So we're not like... I know, men are always like, you women are so demanding. Yes, we are. We are. Because a man who just wants sex or who doesn't bring anything to the table is a liability. If you, if you just want sex, you're a liability to me. If you bring nothing to the table, you're a liability to me. If you're emotionally unhinged, you're a liability to me. Like, why would I want to be with you? I like men, but why would I want to be with you? That's where the book Mate is really good because I, I'm so tired of men being like, you women are so demanding. But this guy, this John Griffin, he gets it. He actually understands women. I, and, and I appreciate men who understand women because somewhere in the back of my mind, I have these tropes about you women are just so demanding. We're supposed to be. Not in a bitchy way, but like, what are you bringing to the table? That's a question that women ask men. When men ask women what you bring to the table, I know that I'm talking to a loser because that's not a question that a man would ever ask. He would already have known whether this is a woman he wants to fuck or date. 
But a woman is going to ask that of a man, like, why would I want to be with you? What are you offering that would make me want to be with you? So, and frankly, at my age, I don't see anyone I would want to date. And I'm in liberal California, where these men are so fucking feminized. They all wore diaper masks during the lockdown. They went along with it. Uh, these liberal men who are fine with being told that, you know, women can be men and men can be women and they're not going to talk to anyone at the gym because that's harassment. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know? Don't let some media people tell you how to be a man. I think I would do better in a red state where men are still men. I think I would do better, but I'm in liberal California, so it's, you know, and I shouldn't say that. I meet, I meet some really good guys that are, you know, my bookkeeping clients, but I don't want to date any of my bookkeeping clients. I don't want to date anyone that comes to me needing something. I would want to date a man that I see where I'm like, oh, you're interesting. Let me get to know you. That doesn't happen. Like I said, I think our society um, doesn't really have a lot of community type things where people can connect. Like I've gone on meetup.com to look for like volunteer things or community things. None of them really speak to me. I'm probably part of the problem too. I'm like, I'd rather just be left alone. I would rather just be left alone because, uh, okay, you guys, I'll be honest. I, Wherever I go or see places, I do not see a world of men that I'm like, oh, my God, I can't wait to get to know you. I don't see a world of these men that I would want. And I think that's because in real life, like these guys that I dated in the past, my boyfriends, they were just guys that I got to know over time that I became attracted to over time. I did not see them go like, oh my God, you're so hot. I got to know you or date you or fuck you. That's not how any of them started out. I might have thought someone was interesting. Maybe I was a little bit curious and then I saw them over time and then my interest developed over time. And that's a more natural way that people get to know each other. And without these spaces in which we regularly see each other, uh, that's not going to happen. Men are not going to Pilates class. Men are not going to the classes where I go. They're not going to the things that I like because I'm a woman. I like womanly things. That's why I think work and school are natural places where people of both genders coexist and they can get to know each other over time where a curiosity or an interest can blossom. That's what has to happen. It has to blossom naturally. These online things are fake. They're kind of like marketing brochures, and most men do not present well. They're on there for the wrong reasons, and the platforms don't care. They don't do any vetting. So to a woman like me or to those of you ladies watching these videos, they probably feel like free-for-all grunge fest, slimy little grunge fest. I'm like, why should I put my profile out in this free-loading piece of shit grunge fest, a slimy pool of shit? pretty much, of low-life men who are twos out of tens, okay? And some of them look like they're homeless, and I'm supposed to put myself in that mix? Fuck that. I will not. I don't care. I'd rather just die alone. And that's, you know, how repulsed I am by the whole thing. And also another thing too is the only men I've ever dated are white men and I prefer white men. Uh, maybe I would date a black guy. Some of them are very interesting if they speak like a white person. Okay, not trying to be racist here, but I don't like men with accents. I don't want to date some guy with a French accent or an English accent, a black guy with a southern drawl. I don't like any of that. To me, it's a turnoff. It's not exciting. I like white men, professional white men who go out into the world. Southern California is not that. Where I live, it's a low-wage town. 
not that much arts and culture, uh, mostly uh, dark-skinned races. I'm not sexually attracted to dark-skinned races. I'm not sexually attracted to Mexican men, Hispanic men, Indian men. I like white men that look like the statue David and Michelangelo, and I prefer them fit, healthy, cultured, educated. I love a man in a suit, um, good with children, good with women, good social skills, like just basic stuff that every man had all my life until 10 years ago when I got divorced. I'm like, all these guys that I use type I used to date, they're all married still. So what's left out there is a lot of riffraff. And I, I would rather be alone than date some guy who likes to drink beer in a dive bar and go out in his dune buggy or drink, uh, sit around his trailer park or beach bonfire. I, I'm just telling you honestly, this does not appeal to me. It's not appeal to me. Also, I don't have any tattoos. A lot of these young women, they're all covered in tattoos. Like the world has really changed, but my preferences have not. So anyway, that is just me. I'm not interested in a man for his money, but I would want a man for his um, values. I watch these guys on YouTube and some of these journalists, and some of these guys are very smart, like Dave Smith. Oh my God, he's so smart. And his, um, the, the other comedian he has on the show, I, I don't remember his name now, but I donate to journalists. I donate to Kim Iverson. Like, I put money on their channel. Um, Dave Smith, Kim Iverson, I like Savvy Saz, uh, so many different journalists. Rachel Blevins, I support her. Colonial Outcast, I support them. But there are so many men that are so interesting, like the guy on Colonial Outcast. He's kind of a chubby guy, but if he asked me out, I would definitely go. I don't care that he's broke. I don't care that he's a little bit chubby, but he stands for something. He's the anti-war guy. He stands for something. He's creating things. I find that very exciting, you know? So there are a lot of really cool guys on YouTube of all races that I would definitely date because they have ideas. They have stand for something. They're creating something, but it's hard for me to fall for a guy just like seeing him you know, at the grocery store on an online app. Cause like, if you just sit at home and work on your computer, you're very boring. I would rather have a guy that has half the money and that's creating a show like Colonial Outcasts or, um, you know, a lot of these guys are already married. Like Dave Smith is married. Like these guys that make really good shows, these guys that have stuff going on, they're married. Their women are never going to leave them. Okay. If you're a guy who has it going on, your woman is never going to leave you. So what's left out in the dating pool is a bunch of shitty riffraff. And I'm going to end the video with that.